Are you trying to work out how you can decrypt traffic within Wireshark on Ubuntu? Well, this tutorial is for you. It's going to show you how to create your own SSL keylog file and then decrypt traffic within Wireshark for HTTPS. So to get started, we need to open up a terminal, which is Control Alt T, and we need to install Wireshark, which is... So if you already have installed Wireshark, then you can skip this step. Um, but one important thing when installing is to make sure that you allow non-super users. It just makes it a lot easier as well to have that feature, but it's not necessary. So I'm going to come back once this is finished. Okay, so Wireshark is now installed. Now there's two different methods that you can use for setting up your own SSL keylog file. Now both of these are shown within the tutorial blog post that is in the description. The first one is more of an, a temporary approach and the second is more of a permanent approach. So the first one involves uh, the temporary, so I'll show you how to do the temporary one first. So here we want to set up just for the terminal session. So to set up for just a terminal session, we would do export SSL key log file, all in capital letters, and then equal to the location that we want the file which I am going to just put it in my home directory. So now with this, when I have this session open, I have a keylog file set up. The second method is a bit more permanent and it involves editing your bash file. So this is another way you can do it. Uh, I would recommend going with the temporary one because I think it's a bit more safer than having something permanent if in like your bash file. But to do it in your bash file, you want to take the same command. So I'm just going to copy it because it'll be easier. And what we need to do is we need to do nano. And then we want to open up our bash file. Now, if you're using ZSH, you can just swap it here to type in nano.zshrc. And you want to scroll down to the very bottom of the file. And you would add the entry there, like so. So then this will set it permanently if we wanted to do that. So you press exit and we need to then reset our bash file. So this will then load in the settings that we've just put. We can test if this works by doing echo dollar sign SSL key log file, which echoes our file location. Now, because I'd prefer to show you for the rest of this, how you would do in the temporary version, I'm just going to go into my nano and into my bash file and remove that line I just entered. So if you've entered and done the permanent method, you won't have any issues, but I feel like it'd be better if I can show you how to do the temporary one for this tutorial. So I have just now cleared it out and it's still there because in this session, I did this here. So if I go to a new tab and I'm going to copy this line here just because it's easier and enter it, nothing comes up because this is a new terminal session. So it only works over here because it's temporarily done. So we're going to be using this version for all the future steps. So now we need to configure a browser to support SSL keylogs. And there's some issues here when it comes to doing this on Ubuntu. The first one being you can't use Firefox. So Firefox disabled these features about a year ago. You can tweak the settings in Firefox apparently to bypass this, but I think it's just easier just to go to a browser that works. The second issue is you cannot use a browser that has been installed via Snap or Flatpak because they both work in sandbox mode. And what we need is to be able to actually use the environment variables. So we need to install from a deb file. We can actually do this with Google Chrome. So that is what we're going to install during this tutorial. Um, and I'm just going to get the command. I'm just going to quickly turn on shared clipboard so that I can paste it in. Nope, that is not the command. There we go. So this command is in the tutorial if you want to get it. Uh, and it installs Google Chrome dev file. Well, it gets it for us. And then the next command installs it, which is also in the tutorial. 
So now we have Google Chrome installed. I'll actually come back once it's finished going through this bar. Okay, so I'm back. Um, there is like a little error here. I had this error last time, but it still installs Google Chrome. So we've got Google Chrome installed. So now what I'm just gonna do to make this a bit easier is I'm gonna clear this terminal. Now, if you had restarted the terminal, you have gotta make sure that if you've done the temporary version, you do this command again. And then we can just do a quick little double check to make sure it's working. Yep, so we've got it there. Now what we want to do is start Google Chrome from the terminal. So to do so, we can do Google-Chrome and um, turn those both off. So now we have Google Chrome. Okay, whatever Google Chrome. So we've got Google Chrome open. There is no errors going on in here about our SSL keylog. We can ignore the rest of the errors because they really don't matter for this purpose. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Google Chrome. I'm going to do Control C. And now I'm going to check that SSL keylog file. So to do this, we can just run the command cat. And then we want to get our um, file. So that is our file name. And we have entries. So it is working correctly. So yay. Um, what I'm also going to do real quick is just show you how it looks when you have a flat pack version. So I'm just going to quickly install um, Chromium through Snap and show you how it would look and the issues you would have there. All right, so I've just did another tab and I've gotten Chromium installed. So I'm going to run our little temporary command again. And then I'm going to do Chromium. I think it's Chromium browser and or it could just be Chromium. Okay, it is. Okay, so see this error here? It is unable to open our SSL keylog file. And this is because Chromium is installed through Snap which means it is sandbox and it can't access our environment variables. So this is an issue that you will face if your browser is installed via Snap or Flatpak. And then also, of course, Firefox doesn't work. So if you're trying to capture traffic, you're on Ubuntu, you want to get the decrypted HTTPS, it's best to sort of, it's best to just install the dev file of Chrome because then you're going to be able to work with it and actually capture the information. So I'm just going to end this and close Chromium. So now we have our SSL keylog set up. We have a browser that's working. The next step is to go into, um, into Wireshark. So to do so, I'm just going to open up a new tab, sudo Wireshark. And we need to go into here and edit some settings. So we're going to go to edit, into preferences, and we want to go into protocols and in here what we want to find is TLS which is here and the pre-master secret log file name this is where we want to select our log file so you want to come in here and you want to right click to show hidden files so that we can get our SSL keylog file here you could also just paste in the actual location in here if you wanted to you can really do either way so now we want to press OK. So we've gotten our keylog file in here and we're going to come back over to our other tab where we had our um, export SSL keylog and we're going to start up Chrome again. So we've got our Chrome browser open and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on this one because this is where my traffic is. All right. So now let's come over here. Um, all right, we'll click this link. And let's have a look at this article. And as you can see, there is some green happening in the background here. Uh, we'll click this article as well. Um, obviously, this browser knows that I live in Australia because it's giving me AFL content and AU news. But I think that's good enough. We got some traffic now. So we have seen some HTTP2, which is the HTTPS decrypted. So what we can do is we can actually filter by this and we can see that we've gotten our decrypted traffic. So this is all of our little settings. You've got the image. All of our decrypted traffic is now 
visible. So this is how you can decrypt traffic within Wireshark on an Ubuntu system. I would highly recommend to stick with using the temporary settings because it's not every day that you're going to use this. Unless this is a dedicated virtual machine where you're just doing these experiments on, I think it's safer to do the temporary version. And you can just keep a little note in like your notes file. Um, I use Obsidian for my notes that you can then just pull from and then use that whenever you want to come in and do some sort of thing like this where you decrypt your traffic. I also have a video for Ubuntu, oh, sorry, for Windows as well on my channel if you do use Windows, but I really hope this video helped and you're able to now decrypt traffic within Wireshark for HTTPS on Ubuntu. This tutorial will work for all other Linux systems as well, so it is very universal. Thanks for watching.